you are using a no kissing for three months dating rule, right? Okay, so. <laughs> oh, I did something. To, wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, so yeah, we, we, he put that rule on the table. And when he first asked me out, I let him know that I was not having sex with anybody until I was in a relationship and I was comfortable, not just in a relationship, but I was in a good space. And so after two, two dates, we had our third date and he was like, well, can we add something on top of it? And I was like, what? He was like, no kissing. Hi, gorgeous Nene. How are you? It's good, and it's Nini. I know people people pronounce it Nene because of the E, yeah. but it's Nini. Hi, Nini. I go through the same thing. My last name is H-E-I-D-E, -E, and people call me Heidi. I thought it was Heidi. It's Heida, but the E is silent. Hide. Oh. Yes. So Nini, Nini, beautiful Nini, we found you on my live stream. Yes. And you are now coming on my podcast because you are so excited to share your story with us. Just a little bit. I did talk to him beforehand to get the approval um, before sharing the story because I didn't want him to feel like uncomfortable with it. But he was like, go for it. So We, we thank him for the approval. And we're probably going to thank him for being such a wonderful man, aren't we? Of course, um, we we just finished talking before this process, and we were just talking about where we are in the process and how much we are enjoying each other's company and getting to know each other. And you know, we are happy that we're moving forward to get to you know actually being together. So, yeah. So catch catch us up. Tell us. Tell us about the story between you and him from the beginning, from, from like before you met him, I, I want you to start, I want you to start at the end of your last relationship and then pick up from there. Okay. So the end of my last relationship was, well, I don't even like to think about my last relationship at all because it just brings up so much. Um, it was devastating. We're, we're just, we're just gonna, like, it's, it's broad outline. Like think, think. Broad, okay. Coloring um, book, right? Like, if I were to talk about my last marriage and why it ended, my story is we lacked intimacy. And okay. We were good friends, but for the last several years of our relationship, we slept in separate rooms. We had sex once every two months. Um, we kissed like cousins, and I realized I didn't have to sacrifice intimacy for safety. I could have intimacy and safety. Okay, well, we parted ways because he was an all right narcissist and he had this way of getting what he wanted by any means necessary. And majority of that time, it was by putting me down and making me feel like that he was my only option. That breakup was hard. I lost 10 pounds. I cried for a month straight. Um, I didn't know who I was anymore um, after that relationship ended. And it took a lot um, reviving myself to have the courage to step back out and try again. I, I think I was solo for like maybe eight or nine months just of, you know, trying to avoid any kind of connection with any person because I just did not want, I was, it was in too much of a fragile state. So when I was finally ready to get back out there, I'm not the biggest like social butterfly. I don't go out much. I mean, I work from home, which really isn't that good when it comes to socialism. Right. <laughs> but I go to the gym, I go grocery shopping, that's it. So the only way I know how to meet a guy is online. And um, I changed up my profile. I made it very uh, natural. Um I think I only have one photo of me actually dressed up in makeup and stuff. I tried to keep the visualizations of more of just my face. I did have like maybe one or two body pictures because I know how people think. If she only shows her face, she must be big. She must be out of shape. She's hiding something. So that was important. And then I made sure that I hit the key points of what I was looking for in a person. Um, 
you know, and I made sure to let people know if this is not what you're looking for, please swipe the other way because you don't have a chance. Yeah. Of course, I hit a lot of bumps. Okay. In order to find a good apple, you got to like weed through the bad ones. And, and I was thinking about taking a break from online dating. And before I did, his message popped up and it said, you seem like an all around person and you seem like you have great energy. I would love to know more. And just off that was just totally different from what I was used to receiving. It was always something physical, you know, like all about my features, all about my body. You know, it was never about my witty, my intellect, my light, or it was nothing like that. So when he said that to me, um, I went ahead and I hit the button and we conversated for like maybe two or three days. And he was like, I'm sorry, I'm not on this app often. You know, may I have your number? Are you okay with that? And at that point I was okay because he wasn't really doing like anything that made me feel uncomfortable. So I gave him my number and um, he reached out. He was like, Hey, it's the guy from the app. Yeah. Always very funny and light. It's never like heavy. He's a big jokester. So we communicated for like a day or two. He was like, you know what? I don't want to talk on the phone no more. I would love to take you out. What days are you available? That doesn't happen often. Asking me what days I'm available to fit around, you know, my schedule. Um, that made me feel comfortable because it made me feel like he was actually thinking about me in the process and not just what he wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so we set a really chill date. Like he was like, I don't want it to be any pressure. You know, jeans and a t-shirt is fine. We're going to do, you know, relaxing things. And I love that. I didn't like the pressure. You know, most men, they want me to be dressed up to a T with full face of makeup and heels on the first date. And I don't even know you. So demanding those things can be overwhelming. Yeah. So we met at um, this place called Pont City Market. It's in Atlanta. And it's this food court, this huge full food court. And it has like an outside. It's right by like this trail where you can walk. Mm -hmm. And I showed up in jeans and like a crop top. And he showed up in jeans. And we didn't even hug. We just like said hello to each other. And he walked me through because I'd never been there before. And he was like, what do you want to eat? And he showed me around. And he was like, you want to eat at two places? You can eat at two places, you know? And I was like, I couldn't make a decision. And so he was like, all right, we're going to rock, paper, scissors and figure this out. So we rock, paper, scissored, and then we chose this taco spot. And we talked and we talked and we talked. And then after we finished eating, he took me to a spot that was really quiet. And he was like, you know, I want us to play games and to get to know each other. So he brought these games. He brought R&B music because he know I loved R&B music. And we sat there and we questioned each other. Like for like two or three hours, we just quest questions, getting to know each other, going from level one, level two, level three, because the games had levels. And so the last card was he asked me was, you know, what is something that I want more this year out of my life? And I was like, romance, duh. You know, I don't I've never experienced romance with any man that I've been with. And um he was like, say less. And he started packing everything up. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, just come on, come with me. Um, earlier in the date, I won the dessert thing. And I was like, I really want some cheesecake, but the place didn't I have cheesecake. So he packed up everything and we walked to Publix, which was connected to the market. And he was like, stay right here. I was like, okay. He was like, matter of fact, if you want to get some watermelon or something, you know, to eat on, go ahead. It was like maybe 11 o'clock at night. I saw this man at seven. We've been together <laughs> a couple of hours. So um, he went in the store, got what he needed and came back out. And we went and found a place that was really like dim and dark, but we could people watch. He knows I like to people watch. So he told me to close my eyes and he lit a candle and he had my cheesecake and he had the music going. And I opened my eyes and I was just like, he was like, I know this is what you wanted. And, you know, we talked some more. And I just, like, I know it doesn't seem as a big gesture to people. But the fact that he hears me, mm -hmm. he hears me. Right. So how long have you been talking for? Um, so did it'll you be, 
we've been on a date every every week since we've met, except for the first week when we we're talking. So it's been eight weeks. Yeah, eight weeks. Eight weeks know. of constant dating, constant communication. Like, I've never seen a man, and I've never seen a man be so dedicated to the process. Girl, let me tell you, this is what I say to people. When you meet somebody who finds you more interesting than anyone else, you will know. Do you think he finds you more interesting than anyone else? I think that he is in, you know, I think he thought one way of me and it changed when he met me. Like, he loves that I'm I'm silly and I'm witty and I'm goofy and he he actually likes to be around me. Like he said, I like being around you. Like yes. that's important. You know, in my last relationship, I asked my ex, did he like me? He was like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Like he never really answered the question. Right. I didn't even have to ask this man that he said, I like you. Yeah. You know, I like being around you. I like spending time with you. The conversations are great. The jokes are funny and goofy. And he was like, I can be my natural self with you. And he's opened up a lot. And he said that was one of his struggles. Yeah. Is being open with somebody and, you know, telling somebody how he feels. And he's gotten, in the beginning, was a little tight with it. But it's like, I know his his three great, three insecurities. I know his greatest fear now, like just taking the physicalness out of everything and just really getting down to the nitty gritty. We've been hitting like really heavy topics and been able to have a dialogue without us just getting overwhelmed or getting angry with each other. Like we've hit religion really hard. We both think of faith in two different ways. And I think it's big that people don't just go as far as what's your, what's your, you know, what's your religion? They need to dig deeper than that. Like, how do you believe in this? What is your process? Because although him and I don't have the same process, we both respect each other's process and we don't want to change that. And that's very important. We have the topic of kids. Kids is something that's very important to me. He could do without either way it goes. It would be, he would be okay because he. He has a, you know, he gives back to the community. So he deals with kids all the time. Right. Um, and we also talked about interracial dating. I mean, he's half black and half Korean. So he's dated outside of the race. I've never have. Right. And so he had different perspectives that me and him bumped heads in. Mm. And um, that was like one of our biggest disagreements. Um, but the one thing I do respect about this man is we can agree to disagree. We don't have to have the same views and we can still respect each other and move past. Yes. And so we've been really like digging deep, like really deep sometimes where we have to like, okay, let's lighten this up and let's get back to having fun. We had this deep conversation. Now we need to, you know, enjoy each other's company. So that's how we've been handling dates. Yeah. And just to kind of be clear, because we haven't said so yet, even though you kind of said it. You said something about how you're having such deep conversations because you took the physicality out of it. You are using a no kissing for three months dating role, right? Okay, so. Oh, I did something. To, wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, so yeah, we, we, he put that rule on the table and. When he, when, when we first, when he first asked me out, I let him know that I was not having sex with anybody until I was in a relationship and I was comfortable, not just in a relationship, but I was in a good space. And so after two, two dates, we had our third date and he was like, well, can we add something on top of it? And I was like, what? He was like, no kissing, no physicalness at all. I was like, wait, 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 what? He was like, yeah, he was like, I don't want to be tempted. I want to make this process as pure as possible. I want to, you know, I've never been with a woman or dated a woman and sex has not happened in the first three dates. He was like, it's also a test to see if this is more for me than just that. And so I'm not going to lie. I came home and I cried because I was overwhelmed. I had a bit of anxiety and I, you know, physical touches one of my top love languages, but it's not sex. It's just hand holding, kissing, you know, 
hugging. Those are my, like, that's how I can feel your energy. And so when that got taken off the, the uh, table, I came home and I cried because I had so much anxiety. I did not know what that meant. And I had to sit back and I had to pray and I had to ask God, why am I feeling this way? And something clicked and it reminded me of my last relationship. And that's why I felt that way. You know, my ex used to only kiss me when it was time to have sex. He would never be affectionate to me outside of that. If I wanted a kiss, I would have to ask for it. And he would nine times out of 10, not give it to me. And so it made me feel like the only time I was good enough for affection was during that time. And so when he put that on the table, those emotions came out and I had to realize that this man is not the same and this process is not the same. And I talked to him about it and he was like, take your time. He was like, I, I know you're hurt right now. You know, I know it'll pass, but you know, you take your time to process these emotions. And he allowed me that space to just, you know, he, he didn't contact me for a couple of days and he let me get through it. And, you know, eventually I got past it. And so when not the, the fifth date, the fifth day, because I have to remember these dates, the fifth day we went on a car ride and we, we drove for two hours and we ate and we talked and, um, he was like, you know what? I went to Bible study last night and, you know, I prayed about it. And he was like, I feel like, you know, I'm okay with kissing again. I was like, really? He was like, yeah. He was like, this is more for me than just physicalness. He was like, I'm proud of myself for making that decision. But he was like, I actually like being around you. I actually like you. I like our conversation. He was like, I can see you as, you know, he throws little hints out about us being together in the future. So um, he put it back on the table. But I didn't fully agree with it. So we were having a we were having a moment outside of the car when he dropped me off. And the moment like it was like a moment out of a out of a movie, like he was sitting leaning on the car, staring at me and. And he walked up and I was like, yeah, no kissing. And I don't know why I said that. And he just reached in and gave me a hug. He was like, well, OK, I'm going to, you know, let you go and get get in safely. I'll wait for you to get in the house and you turn on the light that'll let me know you're in safely. And um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. It got really awkward, mm -hmm. like, really awkward. And so the next day I was like, did I ruin the moment? He was like, I'm not going to lie. He was like, we were having a moment, you know, and I really wanted to kiss you. But I felt the hesitation on your part. Therefore, I did not do it. Mm -hmm. And I was kicking myself because I was like, what am I doing? Like, I just kicked the, what did I do? So I had to sit back and I was like, am I going to keep the, the decision that he put on the table or am I going to push it aside? And that was his stipulation. That wasn't mine. Mm -hmm. You know, am I going to keep rolling with it? And so I did a little praying and, you know, I still didn't have an answer. Still didn't. So the date we went on, our sixth date, we went on this past Friday. Um, we were having the the God, the faith conversation. Things got heated. Then we got back to, you know, trying to just have a good time with each other. And um, I brought him a rose. He's never gotten flowers before. So I just wanted to do that. And uh, I gave it to him. And um, he gave me a hug. And my dummy, I was such a stupid, like, I don't know why I did this, but he gave me a hug. He put me in the car and I didn't realize my window was halfway down. <laughs> and so I was like, damn, he didn't even try to kiss me. I out loud. <laughs> I said it out loud because I was talking to myself, but I said it out loud and he looked at me. He was like, what? And I looked at the window. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> And before I could say anything, he opened my car door and he grabbed my, he he put his hand out and I just put my hand out and he kissed me. But the way he kissed me was he grabbed my face gently, not hard. That kiss was passionate. It was effortless. 
It was meaningful. It was sensitive. Mm -hmm. And when we stopped kissing, we just stood there for like a good 30 seconds and just stared at each other. And I had to break the ice because I'm a dork. And I was like, yep, we're good. And he was like, <laughs> he just bust out laughing. And he was like, get, he was like, get in the car. Please just get in the car and drive home. I was like, what? And he kind of like nudged me to get in the car. I go. And so, <laughs> and he's like, you got to go. And so I got in the car and I drove. And um, it was ironic that our first date and our first kiss was at the same place. Cute. Very ironic. And so I went home and I was replaying it over and over my head. I was like, oh, snap. Did we make a mistake? Did Did we do something wrong? Should we step back? Because it was so it was so like that, are we going to be able to handle that? And so I relayed those emotions to him. And he was like, right now, I'm not answering that question. He said, and I don't want you to answer that question. I want you to live in this moment. He was like, I want you to take it in. I want you to indulge it. I want you to think about it. I want you to just really sit on how you feel. And he was like, I'm doing the same. He was like, that kiss was magnetic. It was explosive. It was, he was like, it was everything I thought it was going to be plus more. And he was like, I just want you to, you know, live in that moment. And so I, you know, took a page from his book and just sat there with it. And I thought about it for the last three days. And I'm like, you know what? I'm okay with it. If we can process it and we don't go overboard with it and we understand that we still have boundaries, then there's nothing wrong with us sharing that. It's still not going over the board as, you know, he knows that that will not happen. Right. And I'm okay with that because we've taken the steps. I've never like felt giddy mm -hmm. about kissing the guy. Like, I feel like I'm kind of back in like middle school and, you know, holding hands is a big deal. And that first kiss is a big deal. Like, that's where I am in my emotions. And he makes me nervous. Like even him like nudging up a side of me, it makes me like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> no it's, idea. I still get it with my husband. I still get it. Right up here, that little tickle, that like that excitement. Where does that come from? <sighs> Energy, maybe, right? Like, like, do you ever feel, you know, something in the air and the, the hair goes up on your arms, right? This yeah. electrical charge happening. Maybe that's it because we are energy. We do infect each other. I could walk into a room full of people and people are going to feel me in there. Some people are going to feel like I brought the vibe up. So it, it could just be like, I feel my husband, like my husband, when, when we kiss sometimes, uh, and I, I very much did, I did this a lot when we were transitioning from fighting to no more fights. And I was really changing my own vibration. I was changing my own mindset, my own thought patterns, in fact, changing the shape of my own brain. And I was doing a lot of things to fix the damage that I did in my relationship with all the insecurity that I vomited into the relationship, creating all this distance between me and my husband. And I was repairing my relationship. And that meant that I was taking control of my thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. And I was calming my mind and my emotions and taking responsibility for my feelings. And when you take responsibility for your feelings, you need to acknowledge the fact that you can affect your own feelings. So when my husband and I would be kissing and making out sometimes, what I would do is I would bring all of my focus into myself, into my heart, into my emotions, and turn my body into a love generating machine. I would create the love in my chest. You know what I'm talking about when I say create the love in my chest? When you love somebody so much, you feel it grow right here. I would go into that space. I would grow the love and then I would push it into him all in my mind. And my husband, do you know what he would do when I would do that? Bring him into that sensation. He go, mm. <laughs> but I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything. He had no inclination that I was doing any kind of energetic work, but he responded to it. 
So maybe that's what you're picking up on. And here's the beauty of the experience that you had. This man wanted to know, do I like her enough to kiss her before he kissed you? What do we call that? We call that patience. We call that impulse control. We call that making an informed decision. That's what a man does. That's why he liked it when you were on board with it. Hmm. Yeah. I, 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 the one thing I do like about him is he's very patient. Like he's patient with the process. He's patient with his words. Um, he tries, he's very like, um, what's the word? Upbeat. You know, he, he tries to be positive and, um, he always says that, you know, he's a vessel from God. So he's doing, you know, the best he can and you know through him all things are possible so he he moves like that and so um I can appreciate that yeah. like I really can appreciate that and he doesn't over sexualize me because he, he has me. his moments because he's a man oh. you know he's like he's like oh you, you okay you looking okay you know he has his moments but it's not overdone yeah not overdone at all. Uh, so you've known him for two months now. Have you met any of his people? Neither of us have. We've been taking the time to um, get to know each other. Um, I like that because I'm very like particular when it comes to my dad and my brother. I don't want to introduce anybody that I don't see, you know, a future with or I can't see a future with. And my dad's only met two guys I've ever dated in my life. Right. And so is my brother. And with him, his mother, he is a quote unquote mama's boy, but not in the way where his mom is a part of every part of his life. It's just that, you know, he loves and values his mother. And so, you know, women don't really get to meet her either. And I respect that. So I think like once we decide we are ready for the next step, then we will bring in the family. But I prefer us to have something solid before I introduce them to my parents. Right. Out of curiosity, would you, what would come first for the two of you, meeting each other's people or having sex? I mean, we are human, so I don't know that. I don't, I don't know that. That's that's something we haven't discussed. Okay. That may be something we need to discuss, but that's something we have not discussed yet. Um, we have, you know, made it very clear that we want to be in something sustainable before we introduce ourselves to, you know, to each other's parents. Um, but as far as like, we haven't even talked about like when or if that process is going to happen because I made it clear that I don't just want to be in a relationship. I want to be in something that I know is long lasting. So even when we do get to that point, does that mean that we're having sex? Right. And I know his sex rate. I know what he expects in that area. And so we know each other in that area we've had those discussions so when when and if we get there you know we won't miss a beat but I just want to be a little bit more sure. secure with yeah and sure that this is something that's going to progress well yeah. and hopefully in marriage you know that's what our ultimate goals are is to find someone to spend the rest of our lives with and so far things that we want align you know I prefer to be a stay-at-home mom and homeschool my kids if we have any, and he prefers the same thing. He doesn't want to live in the country, and neither do I. You know, we like the quiet times of spending time with each other. We don't have to overdo dates. Most of our dates are very, like, generic, like walks, coffee shops, working out together, um, paint. Like, we have a painting date. We were supposed to do that last time, but we just chilled and we talked and we listened to music. You know, I like the fact that that's the way we're going, because a lot of times, especially with men, they want to take you on dates that are so busy and so loud. So they don't have to open up. They don't have to really talk to you. They could just throw a couple of words at you every now and then in your ear to make you feel like that they are there. But really, they just trying to get to the end of the night. That's yeah. it. Yeah. He's not a heavy drinker. So, you know, he can probably drink a half of wine and that's about it. So 
we really do have time to like deep, like dive into scenarios and each other's lives and how we feel. And this is probably the best dating process I've ever been in. And I'm about to be 38. Yeah. I'm literally about to be 38 years old. And it took that long to get to this situation. Yeah. I really hope anybody listening to this is really paying attention to the you know reversal that happened here, which is the man introducing the no kissing for three months dating rule and the woman's reaction to this. And I, I know most most women, like I, I have over 80% of women who who are my followers and the rest are, are men. And so for, you know, there's, as I'm working so hard at this, obviously we have more women going out there using the no kissing for three months dating rule, but we also have more men going out there using the no kissing for three months dating rule. And I want, you know, women to be prepared for that. I want them to be prepared for their own emotions, right? Like paying attention to you and hearing what you're saying about how that hit you mentally and emotionally, how you had to process that and get yourself to a place where you're like, okay, this is different, but I'm down for this. And, and I'm hoping that they're seeing how this deepens things not just for us women, but for them. It deepens it for them. It makes it more meaningful for them. It makes you more meaningful. Yeah, and I can, the way he speaks to me, you know, I can tell it means more for him, but how would I say this? He's genuinely a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Like, and I know most times when women, even myself, when I used to run into a nice guy, I'd be like, mm, what is wrong? Is he like, does he collect bodies under his house? Like I would have to find like, there's, there has to be something wrong with this man. Right. And this time I didn't do that. I was like, if this is who he is, then let it be. And if this is not who he is, it will come out. And he's genuinely like a nice guy. And he's made that very clear. He's like, I've dated women who've told me that I'm a nice guy and they go and date somebody else. And that person ends up being trash and they try to backtrack. I'm not doing it. I don't backtrack. You know, he was like, my mom raised me to be respectful, to be giving, to be the provider. You know, this is how I was raised. And in return, I would get a woman who is devoted to our relationship who loves God, who loves me, who cares about me. You know, he made it clear today that, you know, he was like, I love the way you care about me. Yeah. He was like, you know, always telling me, make sure I stay hydrated because he likes to go on trail walks, you know, making sure I ate, you know, he was like, just those little things of your concern um, means a lot. Um, so when we try to encourage each other every day, even if it's small little things, we congratulate each other on success. Um, when things get hard for either one of us, we try to send, you know, some kind of supportive words. Um, even if we don't go in depth into what's actually going on, we still try to be there in some way, form or fashion. Right. And I feel like all the steps that we're taking now are the steps that's going to help us in the relationship when those things arise mm -hmm. and we're in it together, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. being your true authentic self. I have not changed for this man. And I wanted to be with somebody who's going to accept my quirky ways. Cause as you can see, my house is very artistic. You know, um, I'm, I'm an animal lover. Um, I'm a giggle, but sometimes I can be an airhead, you know, I want somebody that's going to accept all those parts for me. And I'm very passionate and I'm very emotional person. And I also stand my ground and that's, oh my God, that's another thing that I loved about him. He doesn't feed into the patriarchy. And I'm going to say this and I hope people don't take it, the white male patriarchy. He's a black man. And sometimes a lot of black men, they feed into that patriarchy that has nothing to do with them. Yeah. And they try to bring us into that. Yeah. And we don't profit for that. Mm -hmm. Our women are based in strength. We are, we are raised to be strong because in the intersectionality of it, I'm a woman and I'm black. So I'm at the bottom of the totem pole. I don't have room to be weak unless I have a man 
that I can let that wall down for who's going to be strong for me. And that man cannot do in that patriarchy because once he sees my strength, he wants to call me masculine. He wants to call me aggressive. He wants to say, I want to be a man and I want to take the man's role. No, that's not the case. I have to be strong because I have no choice. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I can fall apart and this world can eat me alive. But if I have a man that accepts my strength and also allows me to be in my femininity, I've hit the jackpot because a woman can be strong and she can still be submissive and be feminine in her ways with that one man. Not every man is going to get that from me. I don't like all men. I like one man. And that one man is the only man that's going to see me in submission, in my femininity, respecting his decision. Every other man can kick rocks. And I like that when he met me, he didn't see that. He said, I love your strength. I love your determination. I like when you see something going wrong, you say something so that it can be corrected so we can move forward in the right direction. Mm -hmm. A lot of men have told me that that was me trying to be the man and trying to make the decisions. And this is the problem with black women. This is y'all problem. But we've been side by side with y'all since this country was founded. I don't know nothing else but watching strong black women and every man that has been with one in my family has succeeded. So <laughs> yes. I'm not going to drop that wall for patriarchy and he doesn't feed into it. He allows me to have my strength when I need it. And when I want to feel girly and dainty, he opens his arms and accepts that as well. So that is big for me when it comes to, um, my specific race, um, because we are uh, stereotyped and viewed as angry, aggressive, dominant, manly. And it's so far from the truth. A lot of us would love to be helpless and to lean on somebody, but when we end up with people like my ex, you know, we have to put our arm on and it may seem aggressive and it may seem strong. It may seem overbearing. It may seem like a man, but at that time, that's the only way I can protect myself and pick myself up and do what's best for me. So that's another reason why I would have no problem submitting to this man and his wants because I know that he won't take advantage of it and he will protect me while I'm in it. So I just like to say that. Sorry. Yes. yes. Well, I mean, it's kind of like, I, I don't use the word submission on mm -hmm. um, because I don't want it to be misconstrued. I am a very strong woman in my relationship. I, I do submit to my husband but it is because he takes good care of me. I'm a German shepherd. I'm a German shepherd. Okay. I'm a pit bull. I'm a German. I'm, I'm a pit bull. I'm a German shepherd. I'm a pit bull. I'm a German <laughs> shepherd. I submit to this man because he takes such good care of me. And part of the submission even is an illusion because he needs that illusion of submission. But I'm still so powerful in my submission to him. And we both know that. Because when you look at a master and like a dominatrix experience, right? You look at the dominatrix and you look at the person being dominated. Mm -hmm. who, who's actually in charge? The one being dominated because the master would not exist without the person consenting because this is that a is true. relationship that's why i always say it's a privilege when you see um when you see women in general submit it's a privilege because we don't have to give you all that absolutely not absolutely. i don't i don't have to give you that it's an honor for my husband to have my submission because that is very true. 
I don't give it to just anybody. I give it to a man. A guy does not get my submission. Guys who want to step on me to elevate themselves, they're under my boot. That is very true. And that's why I see him as different. I don't see him as any other guy I've ever met because he's so passionate about the process, you know, and I know some women may have it in their heads. And I've gotten these comments on my TikTok page. Every time I go in there and I talk about one of our dates, girl, be careful. He could be tricking you or don't do that. Don't give him too much. And it, it's, 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 you do have those negative undertones. And this is part of the process of me sharing my experience, but I'm sharing my experience because I want women to understand that there is another way. Mm -hmm. There is another way through this process. And so you get hit with a lot of negativity and people putting their own fears and their own doubts onto you. But like I tell them, this is the experience I chose to go through. I could have chose another way. Mm -hmm. But the reason that this man wanted to date me and wanted to go through this process is because I chose a different way. I'm pretty sure that he could be out there getting whatever he wanted from any other woman. But me and him had that conversation as well. I asked him, I said, are there any other women you're dating? He said, no, I'm not dating any woman on your level. I'm not even going there. He said, do I have women that are in my lives that I communicate with and, you know, we are friends, yes, but I've been X them out as partners. They don't have what I want. They don't have anything to offer me. And that is it. He said, the only person I'm focusing on is you. And I respect him in his honesty because a lot of men would say, oh, no, there's nobody but you, da-da-da, and they will feed you that. No, he was open and honest. I have people that I walk trails with. Have we dated? Yes. Is there anything going on? No. We've already X'd each other out as partners. But if she says that there's a good trail, I'll go hike it with her. It's safety in numbers. I'm not mad at that and I'm not jealous and I don't feel any type of way. He doesn't really strike me as a man that would be all over the place. He's very focused. He has a schedule. He sticks to it. I know exactly what time I'm going to hear from him. I know when he wakes up, he didn't have no problem telling me his schedule. He said, this is what my schedule is. And I was like, I didn't ask for that. He's like, I know you didn't, but this is what it is. Yeah. Like, and he's going, matter of fact, he's going out this weekend. He is, he, he likes to travel and he's in a place in his life where he's able to go and take a weekend and drive he drove from Georgia to California one time you know he's just that person and he's like this weekend you know I'm gonna take a drive for a couple of days and I'll be back and I was like okay he was like do you need to know anything I was like as long as you're safe I'm okay he was like you're not stressed I said if I stress myself out about every time we're not with each other then we don't belong with each other very, we just don't yes very true I I this is where trust is being built this is the process of trust and trust is very scary. Like it is very scary to trust somebody because that means that there are nine times out of 10 that things can happen mm -hmm. just because you are trusting them. But he has not missed a beat at all. Not in communicating, not in showing up for dates, not in being open, not being self-aware, not in making me feel like I'm doing something wrong or saying something wrong. He has not missed the beat. So him going away for a weekend, enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. Like go. He was like, we'll still have our weekly date before I go. That's all I cared about. Yeah. Right, am I going to see you before I leave? And he said, yes, most definitely. He was like, don't worry about that. He was like, we definitely going to see each other. He was like, we ain't missing no beat. He's like, you have nothing to worry about, girl. <laughs> He's so funny. He's not... He's not extra funny. He's like dorky funny. So I just love I love that about him. So I think I think I have something. It sounds like you do. And and this is it's such a it's such a beautiful journey, isn't it? When you're creating that foundation of friendship and respect and share goals and timelines and appreciation of each other's efforts and ability to communicate and solve things together. And so importantly, make each other laugh. We laugh every day. Yes, <laughs> it's so important. It's, that is the foundation of a healthy relationship. And you guys are building that. 
And that's so it's it's this is it. This is this is what I teach. And I love that you're here speaking of it, that you fell into it and, and you're being swept into this and you are enjoying the journey because this is such a big clue. Somebody who's right for you enjoys the journey. Somebody who's wrong for you is offended. They want to get there so quickly. They want to own the rights to you so quickly. They don't even want to give you a chance to breathe in the situation. My last relationship, I blinked and I was in a relationship and I didn't even know I was in one. Like I didn't get asked. There was no next step. There was no transition. Um, I made it clear to him that I want to be asked for the permission for me to be with you. You know, I want that ask. I want to know when we are transitioning. He was like, no problem. Yeah. I will definitely ask you. I won't make that decision without you because that's been my biggest issue in relationships. When I get with certain men, they just want to tell me where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And yeah. I hate that. <laughs> happening. I'm in control. You don't tell me who I am. You don't tell me who I'm going to talk to. You don't tell me that I'm going to commit to you. You don't tell me this is a relationship. I'm in control. I'm in control of the kiss. I'm in control of who I see. I'm in control of who I give exclusivity to. And that is very true. And I'm not going to lie. I was weary of the process that I decided to be on on my own. But after being in a situation where I didn't have any authority, not even over my body, then I I decided that after that, I was never going to be in a position like that. And, you know, he told me, he was like, after I heard that story, I respected you even more for the process that you were going through. He was like, because it not only means that you're, you needed to heal, but you healed emotionally, you healed mentally before you step back out. And, you know, the way you're setting boundaries is important to your process. And if I want to be with you, I need to be a part of that process as well. So he understood, like he didn't know the story until after we started dating. But, you know, once I told him that he was like, okay, I definitely get it now. He was like, I didn't understand it at first, but I wanted to do it because every other way I've been going about trying to find somebody to be with has not worked. He was like, I usually sleep with a girl on the third date and by the fourth time, we don't see each other anymore. And it don't even, it don't even actually be dates. It just be, we go out one time and then she's at my house and then she's at my house and that's it. Yeah. And he was like, we haven't even stepped in each other's homes. Like the most we know about each other's homes is what we see in video chats. And to be honest, we don't even video chat. We barely have conversations on the phone. We send voice notes. So we don't interrupt each other when we're talking. It's way easier to communicate through voice notes than it is on the phone because someone is not even on purpose. We sometimes will talk over each other. So we send voice notes so we can get clear and, you know, thoughtful conversations out okay. without us interrupting each other. And it's worked for us. I don't know how it will work for anyone else, but that's worked for us. Um, I would say try it, you know, so you can fully hear someone out that way. No one's stumbling over their words and no one's saying anything they don't mean. And they have time to actually process what you say before they reply back. That has worked for us. So I don't miscommunicate and he doesn't miscommunicate either. We're very thorough in what we're saying to each other. I love kind of weird. <laughs> Nini, thank you. This is an amazing conversation. I want... Anybody who wants to follow you on this journey, because you've you've mentioned that you are you're you're talking about this on your social media. Where can people come find you if they want to keep following your journey? Um, it's on my TikTok. It's at just Nene J U S N E N E, and that is just it. And if you're looking like to catch up on the dates, um, you can look for dates with Babyface Buddha. That's what I call him on um on TikTok because he does not have any social media. Um, he has no social media presence. Uh, when he starts his nonprofit, that's when he'll actually have to get a social media preference, uh, presence, but he's very old school, like in that area. He, he doesn't do that, which is actually very like a plus 10 for me, because when I say I hate when men come up to you and be like, well, what's your social media? You don't want my phone number. Like, why do you need my social media? That's very like, I love it. And then, you know, him giving me the permission to actually discuss these, my process, 
because it's new for both of us, you know. I like that he gives me that room to express myself and he's not offended if, you know, it doesn't come out the way he thought it was going to come out. Um, we've done pretty well when it comes to communicating and he's very big on that. He's like, as long as we're open in communication and we talk things through, we should be fine. I, think I don't so. think we've been in a position where we've had to argue and we've not been able to solve it. I love this. Good start. Good start, my love. Good start. I'm going to be following you. I'm going to be watching. I want you to come back on my live stream and keep us updated, okay? I sure will. When I get the, um, I think when we hit like date, I hope by, I, I hope by December we are fully in a relationship. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping by December that's when it clicks because his birthday is 11, 24 and I'm December 5th. So we're kind of like right up on each other. And I just, I kind of want us to be in a place where we can go away and celebrate with each other. I'm hoping that's where it clicks. Yeah. Um, we both have an idea of where we want to be when when that part happens. So we'll see. Yeah. We shall see. We're watching. <laughs> All right, Nene. Thank you, my love. We appreciate you so much. You're welcome. And thanks for the advice. I will sure be taking you up on some of those things that you mentioned. And like I said, I did not know she existed. I didn't know you existed. I just saw you and, you know, the things that you were pointing out were things that I was already doing. So I just wanted to reassure that, you know, the people in your life that this actually works, it works. with the right, with the right person. Let me make that very clear. It yeah. works with a person who's open and willing to take the process with you. It's not going to be everybody. Yes. You're going to have to find that diamond in the rough. <laughs> ah, we're going to do some digging. I love this. I love this. Absolutely on point, my love. Thank you. You're welcome. Have an amazing day, lovely. You too. Bye.